Bibi and others were very much against it at the time, but that's what the problem was. And uh, it was uh, not well done, not well executed. And that agreement is practically over. Had we let that agreement stay, it's practically over. And that would have been a pathway to nuclear weapons, and we'll never let Iran have nuclear weapons. Uh, Avi, just say a few words, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations. I think it's worth reiterating that these deals, the third Arab League country to recognize Israel, is only possible because of your leadership. This would not have happened if not for President Trump, and the possibilities are endless because of your leadership, and hopefully uh, more and more countries will join. So they've been working on this. How many years, maybe peace? How, how many years have they been working, approximately? <laughs> I've been talking about it for 25 years, but, Mr. President, it's a fact that it was uh, your involvement that accelerated everything. When I met uh, Chairman Buhan in uh, Uganda, in Africa, eight months ago, I, I had hoped we could reach this day. But it took uh, your diplomacy, your team, uh, and frankly, the courage, the courage of uh, the leaders of Sudan uh, and their, their wisdom, their willingness to uh, join all of us in this historic uh, historic odyssey. I mean, this, but this isn't an odyssey. An odyssey is a long journey. This is, uh, this is uh, like uh, an express train that is moving from one peace treaty to the other, and I think one reinforces the other. And I, I'm very excited by a, a new future for Israel and Sudan, but I'm very excited also for a new future for Israel and other countries, which uh, you and I know, Mr. President, are, uh, are waiting to join us. So uh, I think this this is the uh, the beginning of something, or the continuation of something very, very profound and big. It's a change of history. history. And Bibi, how does it feel flying those beautiful airliners right over the top of UAE? You never thought that was going to happen, right? To save about two hours in flight time. Well, people are flying in the open. I mean, they're, they're actually flying over what used to be you know, unthinkable Dangerous. Uh, expanses of land that were basically, a, you know, in a belligerent state with us. Now they're flying to Dubai. Israelis are flying to, uh, they want to fly to Bahrain. Very soon we'd like to fly to Sudan. We'd like to uh, have joint uh, entrepreneurs, joint ventures, tourism, uh, everything. Uh, and I think what, what was changing, Mr. President, under this vision of peace is that it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. It can be a win, 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 win. I was going to say win, win, but there's so many wins here that, uh, that you know we should we should continue. Uh, and that's that's really I think the remarkable change that uh, you have brought forward in this area. I've been frankly believing it, but it would not happen with for a long time. But it would not happen with uh, such a, a, an active. Uh, uh, I would say uh, positive and and uh, confident American position that just threw away the, the the board and said we're starting a new the old thing didn't work this thing works let's move and you did yeah. and we are all moving so we have many countries uh, as you know getting ready and we also have uh, I'm sure you'll see Saudi Arabia in there very soon I really believe that will happen too and uh, very good relations with Saudi Arabia so. Uh, you'll see something uh, very special. This is already special, but uh, we are going to be signing numerous countries in the not-too-distant future, so that'll be great. While you are on the phone, could I ask you, how is the dam doing in Ethiopia, the largest dam in many, many years being built? Unfortunately, it stops water from flowing into the, the Nile, which causes Egypt a little bit of a problem, right, as it should. Uh, but Ethiopia built a dam. You know all about it, probably, Bibi, but I've been dealing with Sudan on that. Uh, and I'm just curious, how is that going? Because you're really the third party involved with Ethiopia and Egypt and the dam. Are they working out their deal? Because I had a deal done for them. And then, unfortunately, Ethiopia broke the deal, which they should not have done. That was a big mistake. And we've stopped payment to them of about, of a lot of aid. Uh, because they did it, and they will never see that money unless they adhere to the agreement. But they built a dam which stops water from flowing into the Nile, and you can't blame Egypt for being a little bit upset, right? How are they doing with that, do you know? Well, I think they need a lot of help to resolve it. Yeah, no, you know, I, was, I was actually talking to Sudan, baby, talking to the chairman, talking to the prime minister. Um, 
How are you doing? Yes, sir. You may not want to answer that. We do very much appreciate the effort that started with the Washington process, which in very few months brought us together. And I think we are progressing very well on this. We hope to reach a win-win situation that will bring a lot of benefits, complementarity from the three nations. And um, we are moving in that direction. We hope to reach an amicable solution soon for this. Yeah, if you would, because I had a deal done, and then they broke the deal, and they can't do that. They can't do that. So the deal was done, and it's a very dangerous situation because Egypt is not going to be able to live that way. And they'll end up blowing up the dam. And I said it, and I say it loud and clear. They'll blow up that dam, and they have to do something. So whatever you can do to get them, Ethiopia, to do that, they're going to have to, okay? And we've cut off all payment and everything else to Ethiopia. It was terrible. We were all set to sign a deal. It was negotiated for five years. And uh, longer than that, and uh, they couldn't make the deal, and I got the deal done. And then they're getting ready to sign the deal, and they broke the deal, which is not good. So whatever you could do, Prime Minister, if you could, uh, that would be great, okay? You tell them they got to get it done. And I'm telling Egypt the same thing, by the way, you know, because they could have stopped it. They should have stopped it long before it was started. I said, how do you let it get built? And then you say they, they have a dam, you know. But they had other things on their mind. That was at a time when they were having a minor revolution, to put it mildly. That was a, uh, a bad time for Egypt, so I guess they had other things on their mind. So you'll work on that, Sudan, and thank you very much. Do you have any questions for Sudan or for uh, Benjamin? Yes, please. Well, my only, only for them, please. Well, more broadly than for you, sir, and yeah. the, the gentleman on the phone, you referenced some other countries. Can you give us a sense of which countries those are? And you uh, also said that the Palestinians want to do something. Yeah. Can you give us an update on the status of those No, countries? I mean, they're both just statements that uh, we have many countries wanting to come in. We're doing them one by one. We did Sudan. They wanted to do a deal. And, and that was, in particular, nice because they've essentially been at war with Israel for uh, a long time. I don't know if it was fighting. I don't know that. but. Uh, probably there's been a little bit, but certainly it's been for many years you've been officially at war with Sudan, and now it's uh, not only the deal was signed, but it's peace. So that's official, and that's nice. Yeah, we have uh, at least five that want to come in, and we'll have many more than that very soon. And when you say want to come in, you mean? Want to come into the deal. Like in other deal words, yeah, deal. part of the peace deal. And you, said Saudi and you know what it's costing the United States? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> It's so nice. Isn't that nice? I say nothing. Why should we be paying? And we're settling, we're settling peace. It's like uh, Kosovo and, and Serbia. You look, at, you look at what's happened there. We're doing a trade deal, BB, two trade deals, and they were killing each other all the time for 25 years, right? Much longer than that. I said, wait a minute. We're doing trade with each country. Why don't we just settle it up so you don't have to kill each other? And they were so happy, you know? They were so happy, so we settled the deal. Uh, we do a lot of things that people don't know about, fellas. Uh, any other questions for the Prime Minister? Can you just walk us through what normalized relations means? Like, what, what yeah, now sure. is Maybe possible? Do you want to give that? Countries? What normalized relationship, uh, what, it, what it really means and what it means to you? Go ahead, Bibi. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I mean, this is so, uh, it's really mind-boggling, okay? Uh, a few days ago, I went into a port in Haifa, and there was a ship, a huge Ship, container ship that came in from the Emirates, okay? Second container ship, one, uh, the first one was uh, a week earlier. So these were the first container ships coming from the free trade area in, uh, in uh, uh, Dubai, coming to uh, Israel. They, have, uh, they had consumer goods there. They had actually washing machines. Okay, that's bringing down the price, the cost of living for the citizens of Israel right away. So it's the first, it's trade, okay? Then Israelis could never fly east. I mean, we had to go around the Red Sea, really around the Arabian Peninsula. It would take us hours uh, to get anywhere, let alone to get into the Arabian Peninsula because we didn't have any relations there. Now people are planning. There are now uh, guide uh, tourism offices from Israel, all these tourism agents flocking to Abu Dhabi and, uh, and Dubai and Bahrain, and they're now just loaded with requests from Israelis. And believe it or not, the other way around, Bahrainis and Emiratis who want to come to Israel.
as well. So you have tourism, you have trade, tourism, technology, entrepreneurs, everything. I mean, the same thing is going to happen with Sudan. We're going to have, you know, each each of us has what it has to offer the other. It changes the lives of people. And exactly as uh, you said, Mr. President, we're not engaging in bloodshed. We're not engaging in antagonism. We're engaging in cooperation for the present and the future. And it's not a distant vision. It's not a distant dream. I mean, we're actually seeing the fruits of peace right now in these days, days after signing these agreements. Uh, I think it's, we've never seen anything like this. And, and I want to say one thing that I do see, an enthusiasm from most countries in the world, from most people in the world, across the, the political divide. Yeah, Iran is unhappy. Hezbollah is unhappy. Hamas is unhappy. But most everybody else uh, is very happy. And they should be, because peace is a good thing. It's a very good thing. So if you ask me, what does it feel like? It's amazing, and it's fast. They're also poor. Iran is poor. Hamas is poor. They're all poor. And they weren't poor three years ago. They were blowing everything up. They're very poor. Uh, do you think Sleepy Joe could have made this deal, baby? Sleepy Joe. I think, uh, do you think he would have made this deal? Somehow, I don't think so. Well, Mr. President, one thing I can tell you is um, uh, we appreciate the help for peace from anyone in America. And we appreciate what you've done enormously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, can, you, can you follow up on the idea of what this means to Iran, the pressure? And this will be uh, registered in the books, history books. History registers who did what. Yeah, I think it does. It's going to yeah, no, I think it's a ter it's a terrific thing, and uh, it should be completed pretty soon. Say. Yeah, I just wanted you to, if you could expand a little bit on what this means to Iran, the pressure uh, that this, these deals are now placing on it. Well, I think ultimately Iran maybe will become a member of this whole thing, it's, if you want to really know the truth. Look, in the end, you're going to have everybody together with the United States. And beyond the United States, you'll have other major powers involved. Uh, and with it, not have to be signed into it, because it's a region, but uh, with it. And I could see Iran. Look, someday I'd love to help Iran. I'd love to get Iran back on track. Their GDP went down 27 uh, percent. They've gone from a rich country to a poor country in a period of three years. And I'd love to get them back on track. They just can't have nuclear weapons. That's so, you know, and nuclear weapons. And it's always death to Israel. That's all they shout is death to Israel. So they can't have nuclear weapons, but they can have what they want. I mean, they, they should be a great nation. They're Great people. I know so many Iranians. I have a lot of Iranian friends. It should be a great nation. And we want it to be a great nation, but we can't have nuclear weapons. And uh, I could see Iran. Ultimately, it sounds right now, it doesn't sound like uh, something that would happen, but I see it happening. Ultimately, they'll all be one unified family. It'll be an amazing thing. Probably has never happened in the Middle East because the Middle East is known for conflict and fighting. No, but I think that uh, it's moving along. That process is moving along. It's a good process. We've had an incredible relationship long term. We've never had a dispute with UAE. They've always been on our side. And uh, that process is moving along, I think, hopefully rapidly. Well, we have to remove Sudan from the state sponsored list of terrorism. And can you speak a little bit about how that move or those plans are playing into the dynamics of the normalization deal with Israel? Which plans? To, to remove Sudan from the state sponsored. Uh, the dam, you said? The dam back to the. No, to remove the state, state sponsored state -sponsored list, the list of state sponsored Mr. President. Okay, yeah, why don't I have you I, answer that? So question. we've been working uh, with Sudan for uh, as long as I've been part of this administration to address this issue of state-sponsored terrorism. They did all the things that they needed to do. Uh, these two leaders of Sudan did all the right things. We now have a civilian-led government inside of Sudan. Uh, and so the rationale for them being designated state-sponsored no longer made sense. We also wanted to make sure that victims of that terror had compensation. And so we've now accounted for that. $335 million will go to the victims from those terror attacks. Uh, but now Sudan has fully complied with that, and their leaders have done great work. We want to support that civilian-led government. We want them to be successful, so it's completely appropriate that we would lift this. This will also be something that will help the Sudanese people and the Sudanese government. You'll see trade not only between Israel and Sudan, between the United States 
and Sudan as well. Sudan, oh, yes, Sudan, yes. Has, Sudan has great potential uh, on trade and other things. I mean, they really, they, it, it could be a very, very successful, wonderful country, and I think it will be. It's been hampered by what's going on in the world. Can you explain how, how that connects to the normalization deal with Israel as well as negotiations? Let me, let me just, now, sure, sure. They're connected in the sense that the Sudanese leadership made sense that this, they, they both had one thing in common. They made sense for the Sudanese people to build out their economy, to create democratic institutions, all the things that the Sudanese people have been demanding. Uh, they're, they're, they're connected in the sense of the Sudanese leadership is now driving towards a really good outcome and improved life for the people of Sudan, and we think for the broader region in North Africa as well. And with the leaders on the phone, they've been incredible leaders, I will say. They have been incredible leaders. Yes.